The old MG5 was something I could really get behind. I mean, it was designed really well. No muss, no fuss. It did the job and it did it at an affordable price. At first glance, it doesn't seem like much has changed. You still get over 230 miles of range. You still get a very large boot and it's still priced incredibly well. In fact, at the time of filming, this car starts from £30,995. But when you start looking at it off paper, there are some vast differences. What with advanced safety systems through MG Pilot, a redesigned interior and exterior, new specifications, colors, it is rather different. So let's have a look. Let's start with the models then. You get the SE and the Trophy. Makes life simple, I guess. The SE comes with quite a bit of things as standard. The SE comes with LED headlights, silver roof rails. You get MG Pilot driver assistance technology. You get a 10.25 inch color touchscreen display, which feels much more responsive than the previous one. Not that the previous one was anything to, uh, anything to be ashamed of, but it feels way more responsive even than that. You get DAB radio, a uh, six speaker audio sound system. You get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Of course, you get things like Bluetooth connectivity. You get a rear parking camera as well. You also get an electric parking brake with auto hold as well. So it's got all of the electric things that you could possibly want in this electric car. You also get three driving modes. You get Eco, Normal and Sport. You get satellite navigation, three regenerative braking modes, which are called CURS. You get a rotary dial gear selector as well. You get smart keyless entry and radar guided cruise control or adaptive cruise control completely as standard. But it's not over yet because you have air conditioning. You have a digital gauge cluster, front and rear electric windows, four USB ports, you get driver's lumbar assist as well. You also get as standard vehicle to load charging. I've never driven a basic, in inverted commas, car with so much equipment before as standard. I mean, when was the last time you at home drove a entry level model with radar guided cruise control, a rear camera, smart keyless entry, vehicle to load charging, all completely standard. So what about the trophy then? What can that possibly add? Well, quite a bit actually. You get pleather upholstery, heated seats, heated electric seats, I should say, so you can adjust yourself electronically whenever you want to. You get automatic air conditioning, auto dipping mirrors, and auto wipers, 17 inch alloys, and a rather nifty 360 camera as well. In fact, the 360 camera has several awesome settings. You can have a standard top-down view with a rear view or front view, depending on which way you're going. You can choose an ultra-wide view by tapping the icon on the right-hand side. Or you can have a drone view 360 image of the car as if you were standing outside it watching yourself reverse. This is also the first car I've ever driven where you can actually choose between active, static, or no guidelines when you're reversing. And it will show at the front as well. It's a very thorough 360 camera. All of a sudden, the package becomes a lot more wholesome, even if it kind of already was to begin with. You still get a boot big enough for a game of cricket too, or quite a tall person actually. At 578 liters of boot space to be precise. And that doubles, and then half the original, and add that on again when you put those seats down for an epic 1,367 liters of boot space with the seats folded flat. Forget a game of cricket, you could actually drive a stage of the World Rally Championship in the back of this car. Uh, if you're enjoying the video this far, um, make sure you like the video, it helps us out a lot. And subscribe too. Um, obviously, when the MG Cyberster comes out, we'll be driving that one. I might even want to get one myself. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe at any time. But what amazes me more than anything is that MG haven't skimped on the quality either. By fetching so much space out the back, you'd think they would forego things like sound dampening and sound deadening to make sure that you have the maximum amount of room. And that's a good 
quality assurance test when you're in a car. We've got some brand new microphones and they are rather fantastic, but they do pick up a lot more things. So what I'm gonna do now is remove all of the editing of the audio from the microphone so you can hear exactly what it sounds like while I'm driving along at uh, 40 miles an hour in the vehicle. Three, two, one. I mean, that's truly amazing. I, I already knew that that was gonna happen because I did the test a couple of days ago, but I wanted to show it off and I actually rewrote the script to include it in the video because it is so, so cool. It is a great quality test of assurance. So the interior has been redesigned quite nicely. The steering wheel feels as nice as ever. I've mentioned about the screen already, but also things like this almost printed style fabric that's right in front of you and this brushed aluminium looking plastic everything in here has taken a step up in quality i mean even little things like the gauge cluster here it's not pixelated in the slightest from what i can see at the moment although the sun is doing wonders for blinding me everywhere the main screen itself is much more responsive as i've said and there's no hint of rattles or jibs or issues anywhere in the car so well done mg and if you are getting distracted by the rather lovely interior, don't worry, because MG Pilot has you covered. That's their name for a uh, subset of systems that helps to keep you on the road. You get adaptive cruise control, intelligent high beam assist, lane keep assist, intelligent speed limit assist, and traffic jam assist. All of these are fairly standard stuff. The traffic jam assist is really cool. Basically, when you're going below 35 miles an hour, it, the radar crews will lock onto the car in front and help with steering input. What about the drive though? Well, it's certainly very comfortable. It's not gonna win any awards for um, cornering around a corner as fast as you can go, but then that's not the point of this car. And the best thing is, is as ever with any electric car, but especially one that's an estate, is the acceleration. We're coming up to a 60 now, and uh, I'm just gonna bury my foot in it. And there we go, we got a little bit of wheel spin, and away we go, 30, 40, 50, and we're gonna slow down now. Definitely feels good. Even, even my assistant is laughing. Either he enjoyed it or he's genuinely worried. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> But what about steering? Well, great news. We have got in front of us a rather large roundabout. So we're gonna do the old indication and uh, we're gonna go around the roundabout a little bit faster than we should do. So, as I said, not the sportiest drive ever, but super comfortable and it hangs on really well. Okay, that was 30 miles an hour around that roundabout and I probably should have been going about 20 and it hung on really well. So yeah, drive, that's been ticked off too. So with the SE starting from £30,995 and the Trophy starting from £33,495, I really can't see too many downsides. MG are on a roll with the MG4, the Everyman EV. That car was incredible. You've now got interiors that are kind of comparing with the class above. The Cyberster is also on the way. And I can't help but feel that MG are really going to dominate the electric market in the next coming years. And it's cars like this that are leading the way. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, as I said, and subscribe. Give us a ring if you have any questions or leave them in the comment section below. If you want to see the uh, MG4 video, then click on the screen right now. Or alternatively, you can watch an old video of ours, the ZS EV. Check that one out, and we'll see you next time. I am blind right now. <laughs>